All right, I want you to take a second right now and look and see if you've copied down the table of contents, the learning intention, and the main ideas. If you haven't copied down the table of contents, the learning intention, or the main ideas in your notebook, you need to pause this video and go back to the beginning and copy them down. All right, we're gonna start out with talking about what is slope, and slope is just the steepness of a line, how steep a line is. So for example, if I have a slope, if I have a line that is like this, and let me draw my x and y axis, and then I have a line that is like this, so we'll call this one A and this one B. Line A has a greater slope than line B because Line A is a lot steeper than line B. It's like if I were walking up stairs or walking up a hill, line A would be a harder hill to walk up, so that means it has a greater slope or greater steepness of the line. One way to remember slope is by remembering rise over run. Rise stands for the change in Y, or going up and down. You can remember that the Y axis is vertical, and so that's how you know that rise signifies the change in y. And run is the horizontal. Run means just going in a straight plane, which is the x-axis. x is horizontal. It doesn't change in the y. So run is change in x. So rise over run is the change in y over the change in x, or the vertical change over the horizontal plane change. And so every time that you see a slope, it's going to be written as a fraction with the y in the numerator and the x in the denominator. So let's look at this first example. The first thing that I'm gonna do is I'm gonna look and see if this is a positive or negative slope. And because it is increasing as I, as I move to the right, from left to right, it is increasing on the x. That means that it is a positive slope. It's increasing on the x-axis and the y-axis. It's a positive slope. And so in order to find the slope, which I know we've already done before, but I want to review it again, we are going to measure the rise over run. So I'm going to write it again, rise over run. And so we know we have two boxes to fill in. We have the top part of the fraction, the numerator, and the bottom part of the fraction, or the denominator. And so I'm going to count the rise, which is the part that goes this way. I'm going to count how many units I move up. So I'm going to start at this point, and I'm going to count 1, 2, 3, 4. Now I'm stopping here because this is where that second point is. This is the y coordinate. y equals 2 is where that second point lies on the line. So my rise, if I count again, 1, 2, 3, and 4 is what I'm going to put in the top of my fraction in the numerator. And then I'm going to count how far over it goes on the x-axis or the change in x from this point to the second point, 2, 2. So I'm going to count 1, 2, 3 and put that in my denominator. So we increased by 4 on the y and increased by 3 on the x and so our slope here is equal to positive four thirds. Positive four thirds. If you don't need to draw these marks with your pencils like this, you don't have to, but for me it's really, really helpful, so that's why I. Now this slope is a little different, number one, because it doesn't give us the points. We have to make those points for ourselves. And number two, it doesn't slope positive, it's actually a negative slope because as x is increasing, the y is decreasing, or we're going down as we're moving from left to right. This, this line also doesn't have the points given, so we have to make points for ourselves. And an easy way to remember this is we have to make points where a line crosses, where the x-axis crosses the y-axis. So for example, I cannot put a point in the middle of a square, or I cannot put a point in the middle of a line, because that is not going to give me an accurate measure of slope if I'm counting it on the graph. I need to find a point that is nice and even so that I know what those numbers are exactly. So I'm going to pick this point because it falls on the middle of an intersection, and then this point for the same reason. And I'm going to do the same thing. I need the rise to go on the top, 
and the run to go on the bottom of my fraction. So I'm going to count the rise first. One, two, and put that on the top. Now, since I'm going down, since I'm going down, I'm going to put a negative sign. Because this is a negative slope, we're going to need a negative sign somewhere. And then I'm going to count how many steps I need to move to the right in order to get to the second point. So one, two, three, four. Negative two fourths. One thing that you'll notice about this is that this fraction isn't simplified. And so this slope, the way that it stands, is actually wrong because the fraction needs to be in its simplest form. And so what we can do is we can simplify it by dividing the numerator and the denominator by the same number. So I'm going to do negative 2 divided by 2 and 4 divided by 2. And I'm going to get negative 1 over 2. Negative 1 half. So my slope is equal to negative 1 half. Okay, this line is a little different because it's a horizontal line. It's completely straight. And so let's say we're using this point oops, and this point, and we're trying to find the rise over the run, or the change in y over the change in x. And so we need to figure out how many steps do I move upward. And if you notice here, these fall on the same y coordinate. This point is negative 2 5, and then this one is 1, 5. So the y values are both 5. They're exactly the same. y does not change. And so my rise is 0. My run, I can just count 1, 2, 3, is 3. The run is 3. When I have 0 divided by a number, my answer is always 0. And that's why the slope of a horizontal line is always zero. So the slope of this line is zero. Any horizontal line that I have, the slope is going to be zero. And then this last problem here is a vertical line. So again, we're going to write rise over run. And we're going to see how many units does this line move up between the two points. So one, two, three, four or 5, the change in y is 5, and then the change in x has to be 0 because we are not moving to the right or to the left. It is staying in the same spot. We have negative 3 and negative 1 over here, and we have negative 3 and 4 on this point. And so the x-coordinate does not change and run is the x change in x, and so we have a 0 for change in x. Now, if we divide by a fraction, if you put 5 divided by 0 in your calculator, you would get an error message or something that said undefined because you cannot divide anything by 0. So 5 divided by 0 is undefined. So the slope here and the slope of any vertical line is the same. It is undefined undefined. Made with DoodleCast Pro.